Hi, and welcome to today's training for Live Binders for Educators. My name is Justin Stallings, and I'll be your instructor today. Today we're going to discuss a few things you might find useful for you in your classroom. So without further ado, let's begin. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is create a new binder. Now to do that, first thing you'll do is click on the New Binder menu on the dashboard on the home screen and it's going to bring up the create new binder dialog box first box is the binder name so you can create that whatever you want in this case I'll put US history for the description I put in US history notes class period one and then for the tags you can put in again whatever you like I put in US history for mine Category, you can set that to a uh, number of things, and then you can choose to make your binder public or private. I made my public, and then click on Create New Binder. Okay, so once you click on Create New Binder, your binder will open up already in edit mode, so it's ready to go, free to add content and make changes as you need to. And you're given three blank tabs. Now, to change the name of the tabs, you simply just click on the tab itself. And for our first tab, we're going to call it Introduction. For the second tab, we're going to call it Class Notes. Now, from there, you can start editing the tabs as you like. In order to do that, just click on the tab, and you're going to click on Content at the top left-hand corner, and it's going to bring up a menu. Now, the menu has several different options for you to choose from. You can upload a file, you can add a link to a website, YouTube videos, Flickr images, a lot of different options here for you to choose from. For my introduction tab, I'm going to just add a simple image. And from here, we're going to click on images. Since this is a U.S. history binder, we're going to search for U.S. history. Now, the search box here is a database from Flickr and all of these are creative common images so you don't have to worry about copyright or anything about that so you click on images search in US history and then click on find okay so the images that pop up there are several different to choose from you can pick whatever you like I found one here on the next page uh, let's try another page uh, yeah let's choose this one here at the bottom and so you click on it and it's automatically inserted into your binder okay so now let's edit our class notes tab and we're going to go back up and click on that let's do something a little bit different uh, we're going to add what's called a sub tab now in order to do that click on the tab and you'll notice a red drop down arrow and this will give you a number of different options so go ahead and click on that and you'll notice it says copy tab paste tab delete tab you can also move the tab from left to right so you can organize the tabs how you see fit. But to add the new sub tab, you're going to click on Add New Sub Tab. Okay, and then the new sub tab will come up for us, and you can choose to name it wherever you like. In this case, we're going to name it Week One Notes. And now that we have it named, we're going to add content. So let's go back up and click on the Content button at the top. And again, uh, since this is uh, notes, let's go ahead and click on text. And you'll notice here there are several different options to choose from. Add images, uh, you can add text, you can do just simple text as well, just text columns. Uh, for this case, let's do the fourth option, which is media on the left, text on the right, with a heading. So we're going to click on that and then click on the X to close it out. And you'll notice on the sub tab, you have now two different edit buttons. The first button is the edit title. So let's go ahead and click on that. And this will bring up a text entry field that you can type in uh, the name of the notes if you like to. And we can go ahead and do that here. Uh, let's just use Civil War. And then when you're done, you can go back up and click on the Save Desk icon. Okay, now let's go add some text. So the box on the bottom right, there's also another button that says Edit Main Text Box, so click on that. And here, uh, we can put in wherever you like. So let's just put something simple, started, slash, ended, 
is pay some text in there regarding the Civil War, something simple there. Okay, now that we have our text added, we can click on the Save icon and move on to part number two, customizing your live binder. Okay, so now that we've added our content, you can start customizing your live binder to make it look a little bit different and suit your needs. So, still in edit mode, you're going to click on the settings menu at the top, and you can do a couple of things at this point uh, to customize it. You can change colors, layout, and even the binder cover. So let's start off with changing the layout of the tabs. So first you're going to click on layout, and underneath tab layout, you'll have several different options, stack tabs, scrolling tabs, side tabs left, side tabs right. Uh, let's just go ahead and pick side tabs left. Uh, you can also choose the shape of the tabs. So you got a square and rounded. So let's do rounded. The same thing for the sub tabs. And then uh, you can click on colors. And let's set the background color to. Uh, let's check. Uh, not that shade of blue. Let's check on that. And tab color. Let's click on that. Let's change that to a that color there and give it a good contrast. Okay, great. So there's the changes of our binder. Click on Save. Now, if you wanted to change the image that shows up on your binder on the front cover, you're going to go to Cover, and it's going to bring up the uh, binder cover menu. And let's just use uh, images from the Flickr library again. And we got US history in there already, so let's see what we got here. And just use that one and click on save. Okay, now that we've customized our live binder, we can start looking at how to share it amongst your colleagues and your students. Now on to part number three. Sharing your live binder couldn't be simpler. Simply in your live binder, Click on the Settings menu and go to Access. Now in the Access menu, uh, you have several different options to share your live binder. First, let's look at the email sharing. So you're going to click on the Email button. And in the, when you click on Email, it's going to bring up a text box where you can enter the email addresses uh, the people you want to share it with, or it be your fellow teachers or your students. So here you can enter in the email addresses separated by commas up to 100 email addresses. So for this example, we'll use student a1 at school.com and then comma student a2 at school.com and then it's going to ask for your email address and then it'll ask for your first and last name and then also you have the option of putting in a personal message so let's use students here is your US history live binder and then click on send okay and that's been sent so the email they receive will just have a link to that live binder so if you want to share it just for them to view it that'd be an easy way to do it Additionally, if you're a teacher, you can also click on Classroom. This gives you the option of sharing your live binder via Google Classroom. So click on Classroom, it's going to bring up a separate dialog box, and it's going to ask you to sign in if you're not already signed in. And it's going to ask you also to pick a class. So I've created just a class here, Live Binders 101. We'll select that, and it says Choose Action. So here you can uh, create an assignment, make an announcement, ask a question, or create materials. So here we'll just cl uh, click on Create Material, and click on Go. Now here it's going to ask you to enter in the title of the material. So we'll just put in U.S. History Live Binder. Uh, description, you don't have to put one. Um, and then the uh, it shows you the link right there. It says U.S. History Live Binder. 
and you can click on post. All right, so once that's been posted, it now gives you the option of viewing that in Google Classroom. So let's click on view. All right, and here we are in Google Classroom, and there is the live binder we just posted. And there you have it, a simple way of sharing your live binder with your students. Now on to the last part, part number four, how to sign up your students for their own live binders account. The biggest question you may have after creating your own LiveBinders account is how do I get my students signed up? With LiveBinders.com, they made things simple for us. First, go to LiveBinders.com and have your student click on free sign up. Next, they're given the option of signing up with email or sign up with Google. Have them click on sign up with email. Now, this is a registration page that you saw when you registered. For your student, things are going to look a little bit different. The first question it says, it says, student signing up with teacher's email address. You're going to have them click on yes. Now, this is going to be true in the cases of students who are 13, under the years of 13 years of age. If they're over 13, they can sign up for their own personal account. But if they're under 13 years of age, you have to have them register this way. So I have them click on yes. Okay, and then the username they're going to create is unique. So I have them create a unique user ID for their own account. Uh, student sign up. That box here will be the teacher's email address. And then for the password, they're going to create their own password. And then once they've done that, just have them click on sign up. Okay, and once they've registered, they are given their own blank live binder. Simple as that. 